In this video, we're going to define the outward normal vector field. Most likely, it is something that you've already heard about, that you've already covered last year, so you can probably either skip this video or actually watch it in times to speed, uh, just to make sure that you know everything that is inside. But again, that is something that you should already know. All right, so let me first remind you of what is the boundary, so you consider a set omega included in RD, where D is dimension of the space, and you define the boundary as the, uh, the, the closure minus the interior. And we define that from a topological way in CIP this year, even though you probably already have an understanding of what it is. What is the boundary? Well, if you consider, uh, uh, for instance, a, a, a dimension one object such as an interval, then the boundary will be A, B, both ends of the interval. Uh, same thing if the interval is open or closed. Uh, that a boundary is denoted d omega. So d omega in this case would be simply a b. The boundary of minus uh, b, uh, that open interval, would be uh, that closed interval, that open interval, doesn't matter, would be simply the, the set composed of one element, which is b, while the boundary of r is the empty set, r has no boundary, as you would expect. If you consider a two-dimensional object, such as a disk, for instance, well, its boundary will be the circle. Okay, so obviously the boundary is something which is very easy uh, to understand. Of course, we can have some complicated sets for which uh, the boundary is somehow quite complicated or even counterintuitive. Now, if you consider a regular open set, which is what we're going to do, uh, you're going to avoid these complicated situations. But let's first define what is a regular open set. So we're going to consider omega included in Rd, and we will say that it is a regular open set of class C1 if for each point of the boundary there exists a radius R, strictly positive, and a C1 function gamma that goes from R D minus 1 to R, such that when you actually just, just look at what happens on this, on this, on the, on the, you basically just, just put, put, put the ball centered in that, uh, on that x naught and with radius R, then inside of this, of this, of this ball, what you can do is really uh, uh, basically uh, put one, the, the, the set is only on one side, of, uh, of, 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 of a curve or a hypercurve which is defined by gamma. So what we're saying is xd is uh, greater than gamma x1 to xd minus 1 and possibly after reorienting the coordinate axis so you will have the xd uh, which is greater of course what, what we're saying is that it could be any of the xi greater than gamma with the other xi's so really um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, if you understand this graphically it's easier to, to, to actually see let's say for instance that you, you look at this omega that will be a regular set a regular open set of class c1 because if you look at the boundary you can actually take any piece on the boundary and you can see that you will have this gamma where basically you have your set omega on one side and uh, well the, the complementary on the other side. So that is what a regular open set of class C1 is and we're saying of class C1 because you, 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 you require gamma to be of class C1. And by the way, you could actually define the same way a regular open set of class C25 by requesting gamma to be of class C25 or even C infinity if you wanted to. So that is uh, a regular open set. Let me actually show you a set which is not a regular open set of class C1, that one, because as you can see, at both for, for, for both of these vertices, in a sense, I mean, it's uh, you can't actually have a C1 function representing this. It would be continuous, but it would not be C1. And no matter what you do, if you actually center your 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 your, your disk uh, B X not uh, or at one of these two um, two edges, two, two, two vertices, then there is absolutely no way you can actually express it with a C1 function. So that would not be a regular open set of class C1. All right. So in other words, what we're saying is that locally, uh, the graph of C, the graph of the of, of the boundary is a C1 function. 
Now that we have defined this, I can define the outward normal vector field. So let omega be a regular open set of class C1, bounded in one or more directions. Then the outward normal vector field to omega will be defined for each point of the boundary as the unit vector normal to the tangent plane, right? I mean, obviously, if it's C1, that means I can actually compute the tangent. Uh, and the tangent, I will take the normal. Now, the normal, I can go either outside uh, or I can go inside. So I can, you know, uh, I will request to point toward the exterior. And that will be the outward unit normal vector field. Um, now, there is a little bit of a, of a problem, though, is that I'm saying you, you just point toward the exterior. Uh, that assumes that you can define where is the exterior and where is the interior. Which, for instance, if you take the Mobius strip or if you take the Klein bottle, then that's not going to be possible. So actually what you need to do is to have an exterior and interior. So you need to have an orientable regular open set. It's a little bit, I mean, usually you do, but I mean, mathematically speaking, you have to request that you have that. So uh, omega will be an orientable regular open set of class C1, and then here is a definition of the outward unit normal vector field. And as you can see on the graph, uh, it's very intuitive. Uh, that uh, vector field often is denoted n and x because it depends obviously on the point of the of the boundary, and it's denoted n1 to nd, that d component. Uh, I'm just writing it with a line and a t for transpose, just because uh, for uh, that slide I just didn't want to have a column, so just don't get confused. Don't get confused by this uh, the fact it's written in a line with a t. It's a transpose of line is a column. Let me give you an example here with, uh, well, basically we talked about the disk earlier, so let's actually consider a disk, uh, for instance, centered in 0, 0 with radius 1, doesn't really matter. Uh, but what we're saying is that, uh, well, in this case, the normal vector field is what you expect it to be. Here it is. It's represented uh, for each point of the circle, and basically the outward normal, the outward normal vector field is the vector pointing out, uh, which is basically going from the, uh, with the direction from the center of that disk. Uh, basically, I can even write uh, the, the equation uh, for each uh, x1, x2 on the boundary, uh, then that would basically be the equation of the normal vector field. Uh, then uh, what I can do is to look at what happens for a square. If I look at a square A, B, C, D, then it has uh, four edges uh, and uh, four vertices, A, B, C, D. Now what I can say is that on gamma 1, the normal vector field will obviously be this one, so I can actually write that it is 1, 0. So, or actually let me just write things in a very easy way like this, okay, so it's uh, uh, n1 of x is 1, 0. And as you can imagine, on gamma 2, it's going to be 0, 1. On gamma 3, it's going to be minus 1, 0. And on gamma 4, it is going to be 0, minus 4. Now, I would like to uh, point out that uh, we could not uh, compute the, norm the outward normal vector field at A, B, C, and D. As a matter of fact, omega is not a regular open set of class C1. It is only on, the, on each edges uh, if we actually remove each point on the, uh, the end of the, of the edges. So, here is, again, a normal vector field. And finally, let me uh, just give you that omega in, in R3. So basically, consider all of the points that are below that uh, surface. So all the z such that, z, I mean, all, all the x, y, z such that z is smaller than 1 over 1 plus x squared plus y squared. Well, what would happen is that uh, if f is 1 over 1 plus x squared plus y squared, then the question is, can we characterize this, normal ve this outward normal vector field? And the answer is going to be yes. Uh, it is going to be called the gradient, and we're going to discuss this uh, in the next videos.